Hey, this is going to be a very quick list of some 1970 horror films that you need to watch. Duel 1971. I actually created a video, a full review of this movie that I encourage you to watch. I'll put a link in the description. And it is a really interesting film. It stars Dennis Weaver and is directed by Steven Spielberg. David Mann, played by Dennis Weaver, is traveling for work when he comes in contact with a deranged trucker. While there have been many, you know, serial killing truckers or evil trucker movies out there for some reason, this one is really realistic and you can really put yourself in this guy's shoes. It's a great movie. It's very much a thriller. And if you are interested in movies that are a little more on the realistic side, Duel's definitely for you. The Exorcist, 1973. Now, more likely than not, you have either seen The Exorcist or you have seen parodies, or at least, at the very least, you have an idea what the movie's about. A young girl gets possessed by the devil. Some priests are asked to join in so they can rid the girl of the evil spirits and some crazy head turning and vomiting throughout. And while yes, there's some supernatural, totally off the wall stuff in the film, there is the subtleties and the realistic stuff that can really get to you, that really got to me anyway. I'd like to help you. Where's Reagan? In here with us. Now it has spawned a few sequels, one of which would be The Exorcist 2, The Heretic. Please skip that and go straight to The Exorcist 3, awesome movie. Now there's going to be a release of another sequel called Exorcist Believer. I did a review on the official trailer. It's just my opinion on the trailer. And so I have not seen the movie, obviously, but um, I'll put the link to that in my description as well. What an excellent day for an exorcism. Invasion of the Body Snatchers, 1978, starring Donald Sutherland, Leonard Nimoy, Veronica Cartwright, and Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> the cast is great, the acting is great. People start changing their behavior, their attitudes change, their personalities change. A lot of people chalk it up to well, maybe they're going through something emotional or mental, maybe they're drinking, maybe they're doing drugs. But what's actually happening is pod people. Don't let anybody tell you how it ends. Just sit back, watch it, and enjoy it. It's a movie that I really like. Don't Look Now, 1973. John and Laura Baxter, played by Donald Sutherland and Julie Christie, are still healing and grieving after the accidental death of their young daughter, Christine. They travel to Italy, where John is commissioned to repair an old church. While there, Laura meets these two sisters, who claim they are psychics or mediums, and they can get in contact with their dead daughter, Christine. Well, the wife really likes this idea. She believes this is happening. She believes it's real, and John just does not. He's a skeptic. He's the realist. He's like, they're conning you. Don't fall for it. She's trying to get in touch with us. John, do you hear what I say? It was Christine. My daughter is dead, Laura. She is dead. Yes. Dead, 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 dead. <laughs> Until eventually, John starts seeing glimpses of what appears to be his young daughter on the streets of Venice. A uh, little bit of warning, right at the beginning, you're going to see some very explicit, um, sexy scenes between Donald Sutherland and uh, Julie Christie. You might like it, I'm not, I'm not saying, but I'm <laughs> watching it's a little up close and personal. I'll just put it that way. Magic, 1978. This film is a psychological horror thriller starring Anthony Hopkins, Anne Margaret, and Burgess Meredith. It revolves around Corky, a not-so-successful magician who has a partner named Fats, who is a ventriloquist dummy. Well, eventually things start working out for Corky and he's offered his own television show. However, in order to achieve this, he has to pass the mandatory mental evaluation. When he hears about that, he gets a little upset because he worries he might not pass it. So he decides to go back to the place where he grew up, up in the Catskills, and he meets up with an old friend who was actually his crush when he was younger. When the trailer for Magic aired, uh, a lot of people got upset because the commercial terrified their children, and I do understand why. Josephine Levine presents Magic, a terrifying love story, starring Anthony Hopkins, Anne Margaret, and Burgess Meredith, rated R.
but it's Anthony Hopkins, so you know this is going to be good. And you so I've never seen Anthony Hopkins so young. But this is a great movie, and it's not so much a horror as it is a thriller, a psychological thriller to me. Corky's doing his best, but it seems that Fats just can't keep his mouth shut, and he keeps suggesting to do some really terrible things. Halloween, 1978. I'm sure you've heard of Halloween. Michael Myers and... Jamie Lee Kern is starring back then, and so this is probably not a new suggestion for you, but it's something I have to suggest because it's one of those movies that you have got to see. Even if you're not into horror movies or Halloween themed movies, this is really good. This is back before the whole series just kind of played itself out a little too much, in my opinion. In the original Halloween film from 1978, it's 15 years after Michael killed his sister in Halloween night in 1963. Now, Michael Myers has escaped a mental institution and he goes back to his small town where he grew up, or where he was a kid anyway, in Haddonfield, Illinois. There are a lot of scenes in here which they are gory scenes. I'm not going to pretend there's not. There's some very typical slasher moments. However, there are also some scenes that are pretty subtle and seem a little more psychological, kind of like looking out the window and seeing somebody and he's gone. Then again, this is near Halloween, so probably not too much was thought about it. One of those movies that you have got to see Dawn of the Dead, 1978. I'm sure you all are familiar with Night of the Living Dead. We're talking about Dawn of the Dead, and there was actually a remake in 2004, which had the similar premise. They are survivors of a zombie outbreak, and they take refuge in the mall. Now, the one from 1978, it was written, directed, and edited by George A. Romero, who also did the same with Night of the Living Dead. Dawn of the Dead has a lot of different aspects that you might not expect from a horror movie or from a zombie movie, I should say, especially from back then. This is about humanity in a way because not every single thing that they fear is from zombies. There are also some survivors that have chosen, you know, to be a little more violent about the situation and they also must defend themselves against these horde of bikers. Ken Forey, he was also in Dawn of the Dead and you probably have noticed him in other movies as well. I believe I first recognized him from Devil's Rejects, he played Sid Haig's character, Captain Spaulding's friend. He also had a role in the remake of Dawn of the Dead from 2004. Satan is sending his dead to us. How do you think your God will judge you? Now we know. When there is no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. Whether or not you're a zombie or horror movie lover, it's one of those movies that you really gotta check off your, your movie watching bucket list. Alien, 1979. Alien is one of my personal favorite movies in general, especially one of my favorite horror movies. While this movie is actually more of a psychological thriller, sci-fi horror, <laughs> There's a lot to it. What makes it so great is the subtlety of it. While there's a lot of in your face, and a lot of blood and guts, and a lot of jump scares, I'm not saying there's not, but it seems to be a little more subtle when it comes to the fright. While seeing the alien itself and knowing it's right there and what it does to people is frightening. They're on this big rig. It's a commercial ship. They're investigating this sound that's coming from this planet. So unfortunately, one of the guys is attacked and he brings this creature on board. Oh God, it's moving right towards you. Move, get out of there. Let go, get out. Let it go. So that was my quick uh, suggestions of some horror movies from the 1970s that are some of my favorite and I, I feel like everybody should watch at least once, especially if you're a horror movie lover. So if you have seen any of these films, you know, let me know in the comments what you thought. If you have any suggestions for me or anybody else to watch, you know, please let me know. I'm always interested. I do have a list started now because I lost track and I'm like, I got to make a list because I'm not going to remember all these movies. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a good day. Bye.